There are growing calls for the Duke of York to cooperate with legal cases in the US about his links to the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. In his BBC Newsnight interview, Prince Andrew denied having any sexual contact with an American woman, Virginia Roberts, who says she was forced to have sex with him at the age of 17. Epstein took his own life while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. Andy Moore reports. We've come to Buckingham Palace in highly unusual circumstances. It's the interview that continues to dominate the national conversation. People close to Prince Andrew told the BBC he stood by his decision to do it. They said he wanted to address the issues involved with what they called honesty and humility. But it's hard to find anyone who thinks it was a success. I think that if a member of the royal family who clearly was friendly with a a uh, convicted sex offender is going to go on television and the first words out of his mouth should be, I'm sorry, and if there's anything I can do to assist these victims in any way, shape and form, I would want to do that. But today's Daily Mail claims Andrew has expressed in private the sympathy for Epstein's victims that he didn't state in public. The Sun takes a very different line, claiming the Prince had told the Queen his interview had been a great success. Whatever the angle, the interview continues to dominate the headlines. There's also analysis of Andrew's admission that he had met Epstein's girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, this year, even though she'd been accused of helping Epstein groom his victims. If there are questions that Ghislaine has to answer, that's her um, problem, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm not in a position to be able to comment one way or the other. When was your last contact with her? Uh, it was earlier this year, funnily enough, in the, in the summer in the spring, summer. About what? Uh, she was here um, doing some rally. Ghislaine Maxwell has always denied the accusations against her. This was her six years ago. Elusive then, she hasn't been seen in public for many months and no one seems to know where she is now. Andy Moore, BBC News. Well, we can speak now to our correspondent, Daniela Ralph, who's outside Buckingham Palace for us. And Daniela, Andy was saying there that there was a mixture of views, but by and large, people do feel that this interview backfired for the Prince. Yes, Peter, I think that's a fair assessment. We haven't actually had any kind of official statement out of Buckingham Palace today, but it's clear that in terms of those closest to Prince Andrew here, that the plan had been to do that interview in the hope that it would just draw a line under all of those rumours and allegations swirling about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. But the criticism has been widespread and there's also been a large amount of mockery around what Prince Andrew said during that interview. Perhaps a harshest criticism, the fact that he didn't quite simply and explicitly say, I am sorry and I regret what happened to those young women. He didn't say that. Yes, he accepted there had been errors of judgment and damage done, but he didn't quite simply say, I am sorry. And what it seems is that this interview has just not drawn a line under it. He's a, it's actually opened up more lines of questioning for Prince Andrew to answer. Should he now, if he has done an interview of this kind, speak to the FBI and make some kind of statement to them? Uh, how do his charities and those organisations of which he's a patron feel about what's been said here? Do they want to continue their association with him? So there, has, there is now a large number of questions that remain to be answered off the back of that interview. Here at the Palace, those closest to him still stand by their decision for him to go ahead with the interview. They feel that he needed to be honest and show some humility and they want him to be judged on that. Daniela, thank you. Daniela Ralph there. Two days now since Prince Andrew's long, uncomfortable, hard-to-watch interview and still his words, his choice of language, his denials are being picked over and, in some cases, picked apart. If the purpose of the interview was to issue a strenuous denial on camera about allegations he had sex with Virginia Roberts here, one of the victims of Jeffrey Epstein, then that was, by and large, accomplished. I, I can absolutely categorically tell you it never happened. But now he's done it for the TV cameras, a lawyer for some of the victims of sex offender Jeffrey Epstein reckons it's time to do the same for the FBI. He should speak to the FBI. He should volunteer to do that. He doesn't need to wait and see if his attorneys think it's a good idea. He very well may have evidence or uh, information that is relevant to possibly prosecuting others 
who conspired to help sex traffic underage girls. Those investigating Jeffrey Epstein, who killed himself in prison in the summer, have never requested an interview with the prince. But Andrew did say he would talk to the FBI if asked. If push came to shove and the legal, <coughs> the legal advice was to do so, then I would be duty bound to do so. There's been no reaction from the Duke's accuser, Virginia Roberts, who claimed Epstein trafficked her to the Prince for sex. She maintains this photograph of them is real, despite his suggestions it isn't. This is a real photo. And that was the first time you met him. And that's the very first time I met him. And that's right before I was abused by him. And as for Miss Roberts' claim that she'd been to this nightclub, Tramp, with a, quote, sweaty Prince Andrew, his defence has attracted a lot of attention. I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat, um, or I didn't sweat at the time. It was not easy viewing. The question still being debated is whether it was the right decision to do it at all. Chris joins me now. Chris, is the Duke's team standing by his decision to give this interview despite all the criticism? I mean, look, there's been a load of criticism, hasn't there? You just look at the papers yesterday, the newspapers today, a lot of stuff on, on social media. I think if you were to go back to sort of the original idea, the question their office, why should we do this? Well, they'd issued some written statements before and they just weren't sort of cutting through if you like and meanwhile as you saw uh, her there that Virginia Roberts was continuing to make these allegations about Prince Andrew if they've achieved I think anything over the course of the past 24 48 hours it's that they've they've issued those denials on camera I wasn't there I was at Pizza Express with my friend she said I sweated I don't you know and all those other things that photo you know it's not me I couldn't have been standing like that it's not a real photo that the original doesn't exist so they've achieved that but in in doing the interview so much else has come out why did he not express sympathy for the victims why did he not say he regretted meeting Jeffrey Epstein I mean to say that he found it useful to meet him from a business point of view I mean I think most people would probably say he should have simply just said he regretted it and I think if anything now looking back at the weekend's interview he probably expre uh, exp expresses regret about not expressing regret uh, on meeting Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, all right Chris thank you.